When Eddie was a younger player, you saw a guy that was 6'9 and 6'10", long, athletic, uh, runs the floor with ease, you know, great timing as a shot blocker. We knew that if he would, uh, that he were to choose Seton Hall as, as his future for college basketball, that um, he could change things. Yeah, yeah, pass the ball, final casting call. First of all, verbal basketball. Off the glass, smash your jaw, too fast for jaw. You might take a nasty ball, trying to stick with the biggest or Rick passenger. He was a tremendous defensive player. He could block shots, he can defend three men, four men, five men. He was physically ready to go to the NBA. Eddie Griffin died early Friday morning when he drove his SUV into a moving train in Houston, Texas. Officials say the vehicle was driven through a railroad crossing barrier before it impacted the train and burst into flames. I just remember Sam Cassell calling me and he said, um, Eddie Griffin just passed. Like it took me a minute, I was like, what? And he's like, you know, he's he passed. And um, I, I hung up. Eddie had alcohol and drug problem, uh, mostly an alcohol problem. There were other things going on too in his personal life and some other stuff that were really bothering him and affecting him. It, it's really sad because you never saw any of that when he was at Seton Hall. Some people might even talk about maybe a little introverted, but uh, really a great kid. His death at age 25 ended a troubled life that included numerous run-ins with the law and unfulfilled expectations on the basketball court. Newspapers, articles, media outlets, they sort of paint a picture of the negative stuff because I guess negative sells papers. E.G. was human. And the one thing I would always tell him was that, you know what, nobody's perfect in this world and you're going to make some mistakes. Eddie had some demons that were just, in the end, he couldn't fight him off.